The Utah Jazz just beat the LA Lakers 132 to 125. And I'm gonna tell you that the Jazz are on a hot streak. It has been a privilege to watch the Jazz during this this time. Lots of good stuff happened tonight. And a lot of interesting stuff happened tonight too because what's a Lakers game without inter interesting stuff? First off, Larry Markkinen, 29 points. Played absolutely great. His wrist or hand injury scare kind of scared me, but he came back uh, in the game in the fourth quarter. Still played good. He was a big impact on the team. Uh, something I really like about Larry Markkinen right now is he's driving the ball to the rim and he's getting fouls called and he's been shooting about 10 11 free throws a game, and that's something I really like to see from him. Uh, Colin Sexton, 27 points. Jordan Clarkson, 21. Keontae George, 19 points. Way to go to the rookie. Uh, it, LeBron James was not playing, but that's okay. Anthony Davis was still playing. Lakers have a good team. I just think they're full of a bunch of whiners. They just whine and complain and whine and complain when things don't go their way. Now, the refs were iffy for both teams. First half... Uh, I think the Lakers had 16 free throws. Jazz had eight. Second half, the Jazz seemed to get the majority of the calls. Uh, I'm okay with this because it was kind of a taste of their own medicine, especially what happened to the Lakers a few days ago against the Toronto Raptors. So I don't feel any any sympathy for them at the moment. Uh, it, it is interesting that the refs were still kind of iffy with LeBron out in that first half. But I'm, enough of the refs. Uh, the Jazz won. And... Uh, they won in good fashion. So D'Angelo Russell kind of cooked us, though. He had 39 points. When does D'Angelo Russell get 39 points these days? I think I got to give credit to the bench uh, in the second half. So the first half bench was not playing good at all. In the second half, they came out and they kind of flipped the lid. And I think that's what took us a little over and got our lead up. Keontae George hit two back, two three-pointers that really set the tone for the rest of it uh, walker kessler had some good moments it was an it was kind of a rough game for walker ochai had some great defensive moments he had a sick alley-oop uh, but he just has he needs to stop shooting the three-pointer until he knows he can actually make them because he's not hitting any three-pointers right now got to credit will hardy in this turnaround if they keep up this solid play they make the playoffs maybe win some playoff games get into the second round potentially he is definitely he, he needs to be a candidate for coach of the year so the jazz right now are 21 and 20 they are the ninth seed in the west the rockets lost tonight they fall to 10 lakers 11 warriors lost tonight dang i didn't know they lost tonight until i looked at that they were up by like seven when i was watching their game i the jazz really can make the playoffs or the play in at least uh if we can reach that seventh or eighth seed uh, we're, we're only two and a half games behind Dallas in the seventh seed. The next up game is against the Pacers without Tyrese Halliburton. I will actually be attending that game. So if any Sporty Spence 17 fans out there wanna um, is going to be there, just let me know. Comment down below. It would be cool to, to meet up and say hi. Uh, I'm actually going to be making a vlog uh, for this channel at that game. I'm meeting Larry Markin and on Tuesday. He's doing a uh, signing thing at a coffee shop. I got tickets too, so I'll be there making this like this like sporty spence jazz vlog it should be should be pretty great jazz still are eight and two in their last 10 games i think they are 15 and four now in their last 19 game i i could be wrong on that but i know that their last uh games have just been really good we rarely see something like this happen with teams I think I spoke a little bit about this in a past video, but we were 7 and 16. Now we're 21 and 20 is unheard of in the NBA, at least as far as I, I know of. Usually when you get 7, when you're like 17, 16, you're getting blown out by 40 points, 50 points. Will Hardy just has a mentality of a winner. And so did these players. So does Larry Markkinen. So does Colin Sexton. So does Jordan Clarkson. Keontae George. And even Collins. They want to win. These players don't want to lose. And I think that's awesome that we're heading in this direction of being having a winning culture. Yet we still have all these assets. Now a trade could could happen on February 8th, a trade deadline, and it could make the team a little worse. Say Kelly Olynyk gets traded. But then we could slide in Taylor Hendricks, and what if he still helps out the Jazz win? I really don't think that this team is wanting... Because the draft this year is not that good. I, 
we could face it. This past year's draft was really good, so it was understandable why the last part of the season we tanked. I really don't see a reason why we should tank, especially if we want to sign Lowry to a contract extension, to a max, keep him around. I know there's a lot of rumors about Lowry marketing and um, him being available, but he that that's, that's just the media blowing it way out of proportion in my eyes. Lowry marketing wants to stay in Utah. He wants to sign this extension, uh, rework his contract, get about $200 million contract pay him around 40 million a year i think he would re really deserve something of that sort especially the way that he has been playing re recently i'm going to be extremely disappointed if he doesn't make the all-star team i think he's playing better than last year i mean he played great last year especially with mike conley but we don't have mike conley and he's still playing just as good or even better and he hasn't scored like a 49 point game yet this season but i mean just tonight he shot 50 percent and 20 29 points five assists he's been getting five four or five assists a lot of games recently and i've no i've noticed that he's trying to shoot off the dribble a little bit right now he's have he's like 20 percent off the dribble but i've noticed he's trying it, he's trying it out and he's driving to the basket like i said earlier and trying to make points there getting to the free throw line and colin sexton as well is like averaging like 22 points as a starter okay like that's insane to me that colin sexton could like if he, i really wonder what colin sexton would be like if if he was on like a miami heat team averaging like what the league would say the league isn't talking about colin sexton at all uh, but us jazz fans know just how good he is that bringing in chris dunn and colin sexton to the backcourt was an awesome coaching job so there is a lot of good for the jazz it's it's really fun just seeing the jazz win especially with this team they they're they're fun beginning of the season they were not fun to watch at all like it was really hard watching their game the first 20 games and or so but now we're winning games and we're having fun the crowd the delta center is loud as usual so yeah i'm i'm excited to go to the jazz game i hope everyone else just has a great rest of their weekend we're off tomorrow uh, so I won't have a video on Monday or Tuesday. Maybe I think they play Wednesday. Maybe expect a video Wednesday. Uh, so, all right, everyone. Thank you all for watching. If you like all things Utah Jazz, please, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I know I'm halfway there, and it sounds like a lot, but I think we can get there. You guys are all awesome. Take care. Let's go, Jazz.